please subscribe to help you and your motorcycle perform better. Setting your brake lever correctly, the quickest, easiest way to do it is quite simple. One, do you have an angle in your wrist? Well, I obviously have a very acute angle in my wrist because it's not straight. So no matter what the angle is, what type of bar you have, you always want to have something that's relatively straight. This means you have to accelerate into a braking situation, which means you could trap the throttle, but that's a massive delay in getting there, as well as the potential of even worse hitting it, then having to come up, then having to go over, and by then it's too late. So, step number one, assess where you're at. That's incorrect. So, step two would be, let's see what we've got for movement for the position or angle that we need. So, how far can we push it down? Now, sometimes in here the brake line will hit the fork, so that will be your maximum limit. Other times cables can come under here and be your limit. So, don't force this down. Get it to where it naturally stops. So, from here, I don't have to accelerate into a braking situation. So that angle for me works fine. So at that point, we'll go ahead and tighten that up. We'll use the paint marks that are on the bike. And then we know the torque setting is correct because that's where it came from via the factory. And then the third piece of the puzzle is, does it fit your hand correctly? So that is the adjustment. So if I'm going for the brake, then my second finger, it's on that knuckle and I'm using a stick to pull it back. So as far as that setting goes, it's too close to me. So the question is, can I get it where it needs to be? So it's better, but it's not quite. So we are on number three, it looks like. So let's go to six. Well, six is way too close, so let's go to one. There's one. There we go. So it's on the very furthest adjustment, and I can go from here straight away to there, and my fingertip is there. Why is this important? Well, when you're here, your fingertip pulls backwards. When you're here, your fingertip pulls upwards. So we want to leverage that because that's strength and then once this is in that with your fingertip is fine motor control and that is finesse for release for feel. Get the angle, make sure you are not accelerating into a braking situation and set it to your finger correctly. Setting your clutch lever correctly, same thing would apply from the grip. Do you have to move your hand backwards to get your fingers clear? Yes, because otherwise I'm doing this. So I have to do that to do that. So this has to be lowered. That's too low. Too low. Better. Now everything is straight down my arm, all the way through my fingers, so that's fine where it's at. Tighten that up, bring the paint marks together. Okay, next is reach. So as I go, fortunately, as this is not adjustable, this clutch lever fits my second finger perfectly. So the fingertip drops over the edge. The awkward part for me is that the narrow space here means that if I want to get to it with my first finger, I have to put my hand all the way up against. So as the second finger comes in, out and gets it, we're in the right spot to pull backwards. And then with clutch release, the finesse of your first finger with control allows that to come out. 
So, do I need an adjustable lever? I do not. But it'd be nice if this was just a little bit further out for me. Would I buy, an, would I buy a clutch lever to, uh, and make it perfectly shaped for me? Absolutely, because they're cheap. I can find the right shape here and I can find the right distance between the lowest part of the lever nearest to that, to the grip. And then I can get a smoother angle coming off here instead of a very acute angle there to get what I'm looking for. Does it have to be color matched to the bike? Absolutely not. What it needs to be is functionally perfect. So for now, that works fine. Now, is it worth buying an aftermarket or a different shifter if that allows the toe piece to move forwards and backwards so that you can perfectly fit your foot? So this can flip over the other way and come way closer or it can move in the slot forwards and backwards. So the beauty of this part is that it allows a huge amount of adjustment here for me to fit my foot properly. So I want my heel against the peg and then I want the shifter actually on my big toe, personally. My motorcycle boots are CD, so the leather is extremely thin, so I got a lot of feel. So with my heel in position, that's right, perfectly positioned on my big toe for me to shift. So I'm not at an overly acute angle here on the up, and it's easy for me to go ahead and go and shift down either way. So at that point, the distance I want between the peg, my heel, and my toe is perfect. Now we've got to set the angle. So I want to actually drop this down a tiny bit, so I've got some choices. I can loosen these nuts here and here, which allows me to, re re to move the shift rod up and down and change this angle. I can loosen this here, take that off, turn that down. So there's lots of choices, but we always start with the rod first. So let's loosen that up. There's one. Hold the rod now on the bottom. Come on. That's loose. Then we want to see which direction we can go to get this lower. So let's turn the rod this way. Oop, wrong way. We need to go lower. So let's go to there. Now, without doing anything, we'll put that here. We'll bring that back up. And then we'll try my foot and see how it feels. So up. That's nice. So for me, I feel like it could go lower. So now that it's all loose, go a little lower. Try again. That's much better. I bet I don't have to pull my ankle up too high here. So where that sits right now is much better. So at this point now, it's just tighten it all back up. Hold that, tighten this. Tighten that. Now we've got the shifter angle we want through here for our foot to come down and up. Everybody's ankle is different. You may or may not have injuries. 
take your time to figure this out properly. So, do you need an aftermarket shifter so you can move the toe piece backwards and forwards and get it where you need it to be? Do you have an adjustable rod that allows you to put the angle you need between your foot here and the shifter itself? Get it correct, do it right, but also take your time to find the perfect position. Try it for a week and then move it again and try a different position for a week. Very quickly you'll realize one is far better than the other.